So we liked the, that 90-day conversion. We liked it so much and had such great response, we brought it to Macau. That's the South China Seas behind it. This is uh, Wazuzu, the restaurant at Macau, which Hirsch Bedner designed originally. Uh, and it was a beautiful, classic Chinese restaurant. Uh, Steve loved the presentation. All mahogany millwork, beautiful red silk on the walls, uh, a brown and golden red carpet in a really classic sense with a drop shadow, exquisite Chinese lantern chandeliers, beautiful red and gilded chairs. It was just the most deluxe Chinese restaurant. It was the first area that was getting finished in Macau. We build in phases, so some areas are a lot early ready a lot earlier than the opening. Steve walked through it about 45 days before the hotel was going to open. He called me and said, I hate this. It looks just like a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Well, my reaction is to go the exact opposite direction. So I painted all of that gorgeous solid mahogany millwork white and pickled it. Uh, Holly Hunt had this extraordinary silk that's fuchsia from one side and orange from the other, and she was silly enough to guarantee producing the miles it took to go in the restaurant. Uh, I had drawings of these fans in my book, uh, so we uh, made them really huge and made the carpet, changed the upholstery to lime green, painted the ceiling in the main dining room periwinkle, and nobody who was working on it would walk in it because there's a superstition about death houses being painted blue, and I hadn't called the feng shui guy. <laughs> which I don't do very often. So we painted the ceiling orange. I just designed a new restaurant for Macau, and coincidentally, I wanted an orange ceiling. The feng shui guy looked at it and said, oh, don't use orange, it's too hot, flame overhead, paint it blue. <laughs> we had a 27-foot long dragon in Wing Lane. It was uh, carved wood and gilded. And that's not expected, that's pretty extraordinary. But if you're gonna cover the walls with hot pink silk, you don't want that. So. Uh, we also didn't know we couldn't do this. This is a 27-foot-long crystal dragon. There's one here now in Las Vegas at Wazuzu. Uh, another call from Steve. It was three days later. We had this exquisite lounge uh, with beautiful windows out to the garden for high tea because we're in high tea land, right? We thought Steve wanted a nightclub, decided high tea was out, no one was going to do it, he needed a nightclub. Fortunately, I had remodeled those 12 villas that had the chocolate cherry scheme, remember, with the red and brown furniture, loaded them into a container, sent them to Macau, found someone silly enough to make the carpet quickly, painted all the walls, ordered the drapery fabric, and found someone who had all these disco balls in stock, uh, and voila, 45 days, disco including one of uh, the mirrors that uh, is in my collection, the Bernini, with all of these beautiful little candle mounts on it. Very sexy club. Uh, and the, that Bond Street made into a sectional for a club. So now we come to Encore. Encore was built at a cost of $2.3 billion for a mere 2,270,000 square feet of public spaces on 20 acres with 50,000 square feet of meeting space, six restaurants, seven bars and lounges. Note the bars and lounges are going up. 27,000 square feet of retail, which uh, holds 11 shops. Uh, there are um, 1,767 rooms and 267 suites. We made a really intelligent decision here. Uh, we had a really Great talent, uh, Todd Avery Lenahan, who is uh, Avery Brooks Associates here in Las Vegas, ABA, designed all of the rooms and suites and the spa, uh, and we tackled everything on the ground floor, uh, uh, except the public restrooms, which he also did. Uh, and this, again, you see our signature tower, um, and we developed other uh, vocabulary. This is the stylish younger sister of Wynn Las Vegas. How many of you have been to Encore? So, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of, the, the problem is I'm preaching to the choir when I'm in the hometown. Uh, but I'll tell you some things about how we develop. This is our atrium, of course. And one of the things that you've, if you've walked through, you probably noticed the street lamps. What you probably didn't know is they're the air conditioning units at the base of the street lamps. Uh, that the tree in the middle of that is 150 years old. It took us three and a half years, our horticulture department, extraordinary group of talent, to locate the uh, aloe bangzai and pandanus palms that are in this, uh, uh, in this atrium. Uh, and then you see that butterflies are throughout there, and I'm always asked why butterflies. Butterflies, first of all, I love them. Second of all, I've been drawing a lot of them. Uh, third of all, they are, um, they are always harbingers of abundance, of good luck, and of beauty in every culture we looked at. They're kind of universal, and there aren't many creatures uh, that do that for the world. Uh, another thing is that 
uh, of the thousands of butterflies that we know about in the world, and I'm convinced we haven't found them all, not two species look alike. And that kind of diversity in design and color is so enchanting to me uh, that I thought they deserved to be honored. These were created in mosaics in Ravenna um, in Italy. That's the 150-year-old uh, aloe bainzai with a beautiful mosaic dome behind it. There is an actual skylight above all of those. The Encore Casino has more skylight than any casino in the world has ever had. Two entire exposures, the two longest exposures or walls of the casino uh, are naturally lit. This is a beautiful little pathway into the high limit area that we created like tented pavilions. And again, you can see the air conditioning grills beneath the street lamps that we developed. Uh, and this beautiful, beautiful, Bruce Anderson did uh, the design for this landscaping with these wonderful balls of topiary. And I don't even know how many thousands of begonias uh, got shipped in. Uh, this is not a model of our casino. We didn't build a model of it. Well, we did build a model of the casino for Encore. Steve hated it. Hated it. It was one of those, oh my God, what am I going to do days. Uh, but this is very much like our Macau Casino, where we wanted to chamber the rooms. In Macau, we had to create a casino for almost entirely Baccarat games. So it was a different design problem than we'd had before, because before we'd been creating casinos for mostly slot machines. Uh, so in Macau, HBA, working uh, with us, uh, we uh, developed this idea of these rooms that are distinguished by their columns, their corners held by the shuttered backlit uh, louvers, uh, and these huge drapery, and then we distinguish them with these beautiful red chandeliers. Uh, these chandeliers are made from Rubino glass. There's only one way to get this red in glass. You impregnate crystal with 24 karat gold, you heat it to a specific temperature, you cool it slightly, and when you reheat it again, it turns this incredible red. So it's the most expensive color you can do in glass. Uh, and we, have, uh, we now hold the record of buying more red uh, glass in Venice than any single uh, buyer in the world. And the mirror that we developed for this, the Bernini mirror, which is eight by 12 feet in some places. I developed that relationship because when I was doing Win. I, and we were just about to show Steve and Elaine the ballroom area. I've got these huge, what, 27-foot uh, ceilings and uh, this extraordinary space. I hadn't ordered anything for the two focal walls. Oops. So I called. I, I remembered this huge mirror frame molding uh, that came from APF Munn in New York. And I called the owner, Max Munn, and I said, I, I got a question. I need two 17 and a half by 8 and a half foot wide water gilded mirrors made and I need them in Las Vegas in eight days. Can you do it? And he very intelligently said, I don't know. Let me call, can I, can I call you back in an hour? He called me back in an hour. He said, I'm going to charge you this much. You have to use our truck and our guys have to come with them to assemble them. Given that, I'll do it. And in eight days he did them and again he exceeded my expectations. They were extraordinary. So now I've done a collection of mirrors with them. Another Rubino red chandelier. Um, this is one of my cabinets that I designed called the Etoile. Uh, I love Ormolu cabinets, those 18th century French cabinets with all the gold gunk on them, because I love walking by them and watching the light travel over them. But I'm not so crazy about using all the gold gunk in my environments, uh, although I love seeing them in 18th century environments. So I designed this cabinet uh, to have something that light would do that. Uh, these uh, huge flowers, I, I don't know where they come from. People say, how do, you, how do you get these ideas? I don't know how you don't get the ideas. Um, they're, they're just there. They're kind of floating around and I draw them and make notes of them and there they are.